Hello YouTube, this is Zairazan, and today I'm going to be showing you a more advanced version of how to edit your terrain.png for Minecraft. My last one was, my last video was a little bit, it's out of date, it just is. And as I fumble around here, I'm going to open this with paint.net. Now I recommend paint.net because, hey, it's free. Other people like GIMP, and if you have the real deal, which is Photoshop, go right ahead. But for this purpose of this tutorial, I'm going to show you with paint.net, which is what Notch uses, oh look it's official, <laughs> don't believe that, use whatever you want, it just has to support alpha channels. You can see these, uh, this checkerboard pattern here, this is what Paint.net uses to tell you that it's transparency. If I were to open this image in anything else, normal Windows viewer, you can see this is all white here. This does not support transparency, so that it, when if I made like these flowers, if I drew them differently, then it would come across like it would have the white border in the actual world. We don't want that. So you want to have a, a real editing program to do this. Uh, now, for example, let's say I have a texture I've already made. I'm going to assume that you know how to do some of this stuff, uh, but I will help out as much as I can. I have a bunch of <laughs> look at all these terrains that I've messed with. Uh, 16 by 16 textures are the normal default pack. I have a bunch of like really nasty stuff I made that was not good at all. Uh, but like, let's say here, I'll open up this grass. Now this is a dirt block I made. You know, I made this dirt texture and then put grass on the top. But let's say I didn't really like this texture. I'm going to select this eraser and erase this. There might be a faster way to do this. I don't really know. I'm going to turn... Um, anti-aliasing off because what that does is sometimes it just leaves uh, here I'll show you if it's enabled see how there's sort of a, a glow there this you might not be able to see that well but it doesn't really delete things fully okay but let's say I really like this dirt texture but I did not like the grass texture at all so what I would do to change it oops cut away a little bit but just pretend I didn't do that pretend that I wanted to keep this sort of um, this pattern intact so I'll go like this right then I would select it all that's what I want to do select it all control C to copy that's just in case now what I'm gonna do here is add a new layer uh, layer is very important because what I can do now is I can have this dirt layer and then I can take whatever grass I want. So let's find a grass layer. Let's say it's even big. I'll take this huge grass right here. Actually, you know, this is a dumb idea. Anyway, I'm going to resize this. I'm going to make this 16 by 16. Let's say this is the grass I lose. I did not make that picture. That is from iPopper's pack, which I have uh, used in the past for my unreleased textures, which I thought was pretty neat. But anyway, here's this. I'm going to select this layer. And oops, <laughs> I pressed the wrong button. Uh, do this again. Control C and then Control V to paste. Now, if I show this, oops, I have to be the wrong layer. So now these two layers are combined, and when you save it as a PNG, a portable network graphics file, which is just the format that these terrains are in and all the rest of it, this will be what your texture looks like. Layers are very helpful for doing lots of things. Now another sort of advanced feature would be, don't save, but yes you would save and you would compress it down and do whatever you had. I can, is there a way to delete this all? I'm still, I'm not a professional with graphics programs at all. This is just the stuff I've learned along the way trying to draw my own. Now let's say I did something kind of cool, like I wanted to make an effect. Let's get a better color for that. A red, but a little more, a little more oomph to it. So right now I'm playing with all the values here. These are the RGB channels. This is, I don't know what that stands for. I can make the transparency. All I know is this will change what the color looks like. Darker, lighter. Right, so I'll have this color instead. And then, why did I get rid of that? 
video is going terrible. Window color, sorry. Now I'm going to take my secondary color I'll have with my right mouse. Right, so now I can go back and forth with all these colors. Let's say I want to make something really cool, like a design, and make that as my texture. I'm going to take the, where is it? The line tool. I'm not, oh, am I doing this wrong? Yeah, you are doing that wrong. I'll just click once, click once, click once, click once. Why am I doing this wrong? Forget all this. All right, so what I would do is I would take, like, I would draw something like this, this, well, that terrible, this, this. Oh, that's awesome. That could be my a little gift wrap package. It doesn't matter what it is because we're going to use blurs on it. All these blurs you can sort of play around with and do different things. There's a twist here. What's the twist do? Oh, look at that. Make it the twist bigger or smaller. And you might be able to come up with some sort of cool looking effect. This is exactly what I did for Where is it? My wicked nether texture. Hooray, which I don't use anymore because it just doesn't look as good as some of the other stuff out there. Uh but it ended up, you know, coming together quite nicely. So you may be able to just play around with effects and find something cool yourself. Another technique a lot of people do is I have here a folder uh, full of these things called eye poppers. It's a company that's, um, I don't think they're in business anymore, but these were all free to use. Uh, there's no copyright protection on them at all whatsoever. But there's someone else's, it was like a promotional thing. And you would like kind of file them through for different desktop um, patterns. So let's say I had something like this this cool green I could say oh man that might be a really cool leaf texture right for my tree but obviously it's not going to accept an image you know in the terrain.png that's what 128 by 128 although I think you could do that with the biggest ones we want to make it 16 by 16 blam and I'd be like oh man that's that an awesome looking texture and I can just grab it here select it all copy it come over to the old terrain file and place it right on plop it wherever where is this it's not grayscale though that's all right I've now placed it and actually I think that now that area is selected I can also do some effects to it I can black and white in it there you go so now that's black and white and it should be biome compliant so if you end up playing around with a lot of these effects, oh let's say let's say I want to make another leaf like that or a, you know just a, a flower. Bam! I could take this up. I'm gonna make this a red and black flower. I'm not playing around with the colors again. I could come up like this. Yay! Now this would be transparent through here, obviously, and all around it. Uh, it might look a little weird though because you know, it's sort of like a it's a 2D object in a 3D world. It'll change directly depending on how you're looking at it. That's why sometimes maybe like someone will make a mushroom and it looks kind of cool from the 2D view, but when you're in the world, you can see it's got like those you know a split four corners and stuff. It's just how the graphics engine works. It's just modified sprites basically. They're not 3D. So that armed with that knowledge, I hope you can have fun messing around with your own texture pack. Um, now, you should also notice that the terrain.png, that is not the only file you can play with. Uh, I have here a Minecraft jar. I'm going to open it with 7-zip. Not unzip it, but just open it. And the terrain.png is right in the main body of the jar. And then I have other things like items. Ooh, look at this. Door, sign, cart, boat, arrows. We have, I don't know where the normal items are. The GUI, some people like to say GUI. I like GUI better. It's just how I say it in my mind. Uh, do, 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 do. Environment, the clouds. It's really kind of strange too. You can. Ooh, I should zip it out first. Hmm. 
All right, so here's those clouds. Open with paint.net, not paint. It's very interesting to look at this. This is what's going on over your head as you're literally, this is just a, a mass of cloud, just whiteness with transparency in it. I, it's just, it's really weird. You can see, like, if you get the painterly pack, he has his own clouds folder, which is just beefed up versions of this, um, which I tend not to use because. I don't know, it just takes up more, it's like a little bit more kilobytes than the normal Minecraft jar cloud, so I just don't use it. I don't know how much that would really affect performance, but who knows. The art, the kz.png, this is the other one that people really like to play around with, because I don't know if there's any restrictions or limits on it as far as size goes, but who knows. Someone else, not me, knows. That's, that's how that works. So I'm going to open this with paint.net again. And these are all the pictures and the paintings you put in the game. And I could obviously play around with this. And then what you would do is you would zip up your texture pack. Um, I highly recommend that you would do something like download Eld Pack or download Painterly or someone else already has a pack structure because directories will matter uh, where these are. Don't save. For example, here is the Painterly pack. right here and although this is gonna be a little bit of a mess because he has alternates and stuff in here this is the full pack this isn't something I, I chose with his customizer it's laid out just like that minecraft jar file was except for this new file called alternates which is just stuff that you can play place in and play in and you know do whatever you want to do you would use paint on that or you just you know swap them out he gives you that ability to take this and look at it so like mobs, I can go oh, go look at the mobs and change these. Let's say I didn't like Painterly's ghasts, but I liked Eld's ghast. I would just delete these, put Eld's in, right in place or overwrite it, and then you would go back and zip this back up. Right? Zip it as a normal zip, normal compression. I, I don't know if the other compression levels work uh, or how well they work, if they do at all. I just always just do a normal compression. You're not saving much anyway. And then you jump in and put it in your app data, roaming, Minecraft, texture packs. So if you know how to put texture packs in, uh, you should, yeah, anyway, you should know that. <laughs> but anyway, that is all for now. I hope you learned a little bit more and there's no need to fumble around with the texture utilities anymore. Um, one program I do have to recommend that I no longer have on this computer I have at a format recently is Tile Studio. If you can find Tile Studio, it is free. It'll let you line up your, you know, whatever kind of terrain little, you know, if you want to make dirt, you put it in a Tile Studio and it'll show you how that tile, how that dirt um, tiles out correctly. There may be an easy way to do that in um, Paint.net, you have to mess with the offsets and all the rest of it. It's a little more advanced than I know. And now you know what I know. Have fun.